The best definition of fortified antibiotics is exemplified by the following. The use of reformulations of parenteral antibiotics as eye drops with non-marketed composition or concentrations. So either the required drug is not available commercially as eye drops or not available in a concentration that would provide optimal results in severe infections. Combination therapy with fortified antibiotics is generally not the first line of treatment for mild to moderate bacterial keratitis as monotherapy with commercially available topical fluoroquinolones has been shown to be just as effective. However, they may be considered in the following situations. Large and or visually significant corneal infiltrates, especially if a hypopion is present. In severe infections to obtain a higher available concentration of the drug. Eyes unresponsive to initial treatment. When drugs for specific organisms are required and which are available only in parenteral form. For example, vancomycin. Where, uh, fluoroquinolone resistant cases, example MRSA and resistant pseudomonas post trabeculectomy blebitis and endophthalmitis. Now you have chosen to give fortified antibiotics, which ones do you choose? When the organism is not known, none isolated or when multiple organisms are present, a combination of two drugs, one to cover gram positive organisms and one to cover gram negative organisms is used. The usual combination is 5% cefazolin for gram positive organisms and 1.4% tobramycin for gram negative organisms. Alternately, a 5% vancomycin may be used for gram positive organisms. However, unless specifically indicated, cefazolin is preferred as it is less toxic to the ocular surface. Alternately, for gram negative organisms, 1.4% gentamicin. 2-4% amikacin or 5% ceftazidine may be used. If the type of organism is known, then specific antibiotics may be used. Cefazolin or vancomycin for gram-positive cocci, tobramycin or ceftazidine for gram-negative rods, ceftrioxone or ceftazidine for gram-negative cocci, and clarithromycin or amikacin for atypical mycobacteria. There are other antibiotics that are used less commonly. Since we said that these are not available commercially, let's see how to prepare some of the commonly used fortified antibiotics. The methodology is the same for both cefazolin and ceftazidine as both are available as vials containing 1 gram of powder. Since we require a 5% solution, this means the concentration is 50 mg per ml. So add 9.2 ml of artificial tears to the vial to get a total volume of 10 ml that contains 1000 mg of antibiotic. Now take 5 ml of this solution which should contain 500 mg and dilute further with another 5 ml of artificial tears. So we have the same 500 mg now in 10 ml of solution. This is a concentration of 50 mg in 1 ml which is what we want. Vancomycin is also required in a 5% concentration. To one 500 mg containing vial, add 10 ml of either 0.9% sodium chloride without preservatives meant for injection or artificial tears. This gives you a 10 ml solution containing 500 mg that is there is 50 mg per ml that is 5%. For tobramycin or gentamicin, withdraw 2 ml from an intravenous vial that contains 40 mg per ml that is 80 mg of the drug and add it to a commercially available topical solution to give 14 mg per ml or 1.4%. Are there any drawbacks to the use of fortified antibiotics? There is an increased risk of ocular surface toxicity, especially with prolonged usage. One, because of the increased concentration of the drugs and two, because of the free radicals that form if no preservative has been used. Hence, these drugs should not be used beyond seven days. These drugs may retard epithelial healing. Increased tonicity of fortified drops induces reflex tearing, which can dilute the medication and reduce tissue penetration. 
these drugs can be stored at room temperature for just a week after which they must be discarded they may be used for up to a month if stored at 4 degrees centigrade some centers freeze the preparations at minus 20 degrees centigrade permitting them to be used for up to 6 months this way the pharmacy needs to prepare these antibiotics just twice a year The risk of contamination is always present when compounding mixtures and hence the need for careful preparation in a sterile environment. Of course, fortified antibiotics are more expensive compared to commercially available antibiotics. Because of all these drawbacks, fortified antibiotics should only be used in indicated cases. Some precautions to be taken while using fortified antibiotics, sterile precautions to be taken during preparation. the date of preparation and the date of discard are to be indicated